What's going on everybody? This is Cody, the home theater hobbyist. As a product reviewer here on YouTube, I review a lot of speakers and subwoofers. And one of the questions I get quite often, either in the comments section or via email is, is a particular speaker or subwoofer going to be too much for my room? Now, sometimes they're asking about physical size, but more often they're asking about output. Will it be too loud? Will it disturb my neighbors? Will it, you know, what kind of spousal acceptance factor will I have with these, you know, big speakers, big subwoofers in my room? Well, I've had an opportunity to try it out in my own room because I have dual 15s in my room right now. These are the Earthquake Sound Mini Me DSP P15s. And the cool thing about both of these subwoofers is each one has dual drivers in each cabinet. So you've got an active driver and you have a passive driver. And the way it works is the active driver has all the electronics hooked up to it. It moves in and out. And as it moves in and out, it's pushing air inside the cabinet and it moves the passive driver as well. So basically you kind of have more or less, in this case, I've got like four 15s in this room. And so I want to talk about that experience, how these sound, but I also want to answer the question of can you have too much bass and I'm going to back up my conclusions with an audio sample so let's get to it. Before I get started on this video too far I do want to apologize for being a few weeks late on this video. I wanted to have it out a couple of weeks ago, but life happens, right? I also ran into uh, the iWolfer app had an update and I couldn't get the room correction to work. So I did talk to Earthquake Sound and they got me some settings that worked. So thank you Earthquake Sound for that. Um, and if you're running into that issue, contact them. They can get you set up. They're really nice, really responsive. So definitely contact them. But anyways, let's go ahead and let's get this video going. So here I am with the Mini Me DSP P15. And honestly, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about design, features, the iWolf app, how it works or anything like that, because a few months ago I had an opportunity to review the little brother to this, the DSP P12. And so I talked about all of those things extensively in that video. So you can definitely check that out in the card up above. But here, there's a couple things I do want to mention that are more, let's say, germane to this subwoofer. The first thing this is a big subwoofer it's about 74 pounds it's sealed so it's not as big as you know a ported version would be but it's about 74 pounds and it weighs 90 pounds shipped okay when this was delivered to the house when these were delivered to the house uh the ups driver I heard him pull up outside and i just looked out the window and he struggled to get it out of the back of the truck it wasn't delivered freight it was delivered on a regular ups truck he struggled to get it out of the truck because it's so heavy ups even put a special sticker on it to tell them exactly how to lift it to get out of there okay so i'm telling you that to say this if you have these delivered to your home, make sure you have a buddy to help you move these around. Don't try to be a hero. Don't try to be He-Man and move it all around. Just get a buddy to help you, okay? I just wanna put that out there because that's important for this subwoofer. The other thing I wanna mention is this passive driver. It has the same slaps technology as the P12 has, but it's just a little bit different than the P12. Now, the way Earthquake Sound does their passive drivers is a little bit different than other companies. Instead of using the active driver and taking away a few components like the magnet, the voice coil, that sort of thing, they create an entirely new driver and they call it slaps, which is their patented proprietary technology. And what it is, is it's a driver like this, except it has a weight on it and it's also got a few other components to allow it to have the same forward and aft excursion uh, regardless of you know which way it's going right so that way you get better output and the weight also helps slow it down a little bit so you have better response times better transient that sort of thing right now the p12 has that as well but one thing the p12 has that this doesn't have is it has an adjustable weight system it's got a little bolt in the center of the driver and you can adjust the weights at you know weights or whatever on the back of it this doesn't have that this just has a single weight on it right so it's symmetric but it has a single weight so i just wanted to point that out because that was one of the other things that i found that was a little bit different with this compared to the p12 but this has the same gloss finish it has the same driver layout it's got basically the same components here on the amp it does add in um xlr connections and stuff like that so there's just a couple of little things but not very much so again if you want to find out more about features design that sort of thing look at that p12 video that i did 
Now let's move on and talk about sound quality because that's really what I want to talk about in this video. After I took the subwoofers out of the box, I set them up here and on the other side of the television. This is the best place for bass in this room when you're seated in the main listening position. And over there is the third best place. And I set the subwoofers up in this configuration, mainly out of convenience and because I knew it would work uh, for what I'm doing. Now, after I did that, I turned them on. I turned on Blade Runner 2049. I did no setup, no DSP, no room correction, nothing. I just turned it on. And if you know anything about the opening scene of that movie, the first minute and a half, two minutes, whatever, it's nothing but bass. And boy, it was fantastic in here. I mean, it was bass for days. It was the floor was shaking, drywall was popping, things were vibrating. It was great. I was really enjoying myself. It was probably, I don't know, 85 dB at my main listening position. And this is not at reference level this is at like minus 35 db so you know 35 db away from reference level and it was loud it was great i just i really really enjoyed it but after i got over the initial just fun of playing with it right i went ahead and i ran the odyssey room correction on my uh denon avr and i set the bass at 74 75 db at my main listening position for both subwoofers now traditionally typically i run a little bit hot you know say 77 78 db with my main setup but with these i was like i can just go for 74 75 because that's the recommended volume at the main listening position for subwoofers and after i set them up i started watching movies and listening to music and I didn't run the DSP yet. I want to talk about the DSP free results first, right? Um, and basically what I found was that this has a nice balanced sound, nice detailed bass, and it has nice fast transients when you're listening to music. Uh, the fact that this can play down to easily 16 hertz um, definitely works. You definitely have plenty of bass for movies. You get nice rumbles, you get nice deep bass, and it's nice and controlled because this is a sealed box. And again, they have these slaps technology on the passive woofer. So it starts and stops like it's supposed to. And that translates into music. So you have nice musical definition and it's hitting all the notes. So it's a very, very nice subwoofer. But then I moved on to the iWoofer app and I tried both the linear and boomy region room corrections because those are the ones that I knew worked based on my previous P12 experience. Now, the good news is it again cleans up everything. So you get better definition and all the frequencies and you can really dial it in. You can have a movie preset. You can have a music preset. So the standard is good and iWoofer makes it just that much better. It really does a good job. Now, a couple of quick tips. Uh, make sure that you turn the uh, amp all the way on, not just the auto setting. That way it doesn't shut off afterwards or in the middle of a calibration. And make sure you hit the DSP switch to actually turn that on. So again, it will run. But otherwise, it works and it does work well. Now let's answer the question that I posed at the beginning of this video. Can big subwoofers like these be too much for the room? Can it be too loud? And the short answer is yes, if things are not set up correctly. If you have the subwoofer set, so they're 85, 90, 95 dB um, at the main listening position, it's going to be too loud and it's going to be too much. The floor is going to rumble. The drywall is going to crack. Things are going to drop off the wall when those bass notes hits. It's going to be fun, but it is going to be loud. OK, um, but when you set it where it's 72 to 75 dB at the main listening position, it's actually set correctly. Then you'll have a much more enjoyable experience. The bass won't be overpowering the mid range or the treble. It'll be right in line where it's supposed to be. And when you have a good subwoofer, that's how it works. These are good subwoofers. And without the iWoofer, uh, no iWoofer DSP on or anything like that, just setting these up at 75 dB at the right distance from my main listening position, it worked great. It didn't overpower the mid range. It didn't overpower the treble. It worked just like it's supposed to work. So you don't really have to worry about it when things are set up correctly. Bass waves do still travel, but you don't have to worry about it. And that is a good thing. OK, so don't worry too much. You can always turn the volume down just a little bit. You can go down to 70 dB if you really need to. OK, so don't worry about that. But one thing this does do 
um, dual subwoofers, I mean, one of the things that it does do, or even multiple subwoofers, is it gives you better bass balance throughout your room. So now I'm going to play an audio sample so you can hear just that. In this audio sample, I'm playing, I think, a 31 and a half hertz tone. Um, and I play the dual subwoofers, then I play a single. And what I've done is I've set up two microphones, one in my main listening position and one to in the seat to the left of the main listening position. That's the secondary position. That's where my wife sits. And they're both at ear level and they're just recording the 31 and a half hertz tone. So grab a pair of headphones and listen to this audio sample. Okay, hopefully you heard that audio sample and you could hear a difference. Basically what happens is initially when I'm playing the dual subs, you got a nice 31 and a half hertz tone. But once I go to the single sub and I'm using the main sub, this one, everything drops a couple of dB. But then what you also notice is the one on the left kind of drops out and you're getting a little bit more right ear cup. You're hearing the, you know, in your ear a little bit more than you're hearing in the left. And the reason that is, is because that's the mic in my main listening position. And like I said, this position works really, really well for the main listening position. But if you move over just a seat, all of a sudden the bass drops a few more db and what dual subwoofers or multiple subwoofers does is it gives you better balance seat to seat so yes it does also increase the output but again you can turn that down just a little bit a couple db and it's fine but you have nice balanced bass okay so that's the cool thing about this is again having big subwoofers doesn't mean that your whole house is always shaking just turn the volume down a little bit, set the level at, let's say 72 to 75 dB, and it should work just fine. But you should get dual subwoofers. You should get multiple subwoofers because you have better bass balance. Nobody's, you know, not one person's hearing, well, wow, that's really loud. Another person's like, I hear, I don't hear any bass, you know, because that's what could happen, okay? So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful, definitely give us a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to uh, subscribe and purchase these subwoofers. They're really good. The Mini Me DSPs, the P12 is good. And now I can say the P15, P15 is also good, especially in the dual configuration. So definitely use those links below to purchase these subwoofers. And again, thank you Earthquake Sound for let me borrow these two subwoofers so I can do this video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. We'll talk to you next time.